Busk loves to party! Is that a train? Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and it's another week of toy news. A little light this week, but it's the holiday season. It's December. It's coming up on the end of the year, and we're all getting ready for <laughs> what's 2021 going to bring. But that's never stopped us before, has it? So let's kick back, talk about one of our favorite things in the world, and that is small plastic representations of our favorite characters and vehicles and animals from movies and comic books and TV shows and whatever else. Jumping back to last week, some of you caught me flubbing the Transformers news by calling the new reveals Earthrise when they are obviously Kingdom. I mean, it says Kingdom right there on the box. My brain gets jumbled up because the series was pushed back, but that didn't stop Hasbro from releasing all the Siege figures and now most of the Earthrise figures before we even see that season. So Kingdom seems like way, way ahead, but I'm not gonna grop. It's Transformers characters. But the other thing I forgot is Hasbro's announcement to use less plastic in the packaging. I pointed out the window looks tiny and weird and not what I imagine when I think of the trash between me and toy, but this makes sense. Plus we get more artwork on the packaging. So yeah, thanks to everyone who took a minute to clarify that in the comments section and it's always appreciated, especially when you're nice about it. That was a great thing. I was like, oh yes, I did forget about that. Yep, I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. Forgot about it, but how can I get mad? It was all on me. Another small update from last week. We talked about the Kyoto Amazing Yamaguchi My Hero Academia Bakugo and how it's packed with accessories and just a great looking action figure. It hits all the poses and exudes all the attitude. This week, just some additional pictures that weren't included in the original solicitation. A B-roll of slightly different and tweaked photos from the pre-order, but then also some new poses and group shots. Like this pic that shows you could take that big old grenade sleeve, slip it onto Midoriya's forearm, but then there's also a new group shot with All Might, and man, this line just captures the character's personalities perfectly. And if I didn't already have this figure on pre-order, it would be this photo that seals the deal. I mean, I love me a good crouch down, one fist on the ground pose. So good. I want to print this out and hang it on the wall. But at the same time, I'm going to wait, get my figure, and then replicate this pose right off the bat. Take some pictures, play around. That's the fun thing about the Revel Tech. It may be frustrating, but you can... Look at that. $75 releases in April. For new action figures, I swear, every time I post a weekly, something new pops up. But that's not a bad thing. It actually puts a smile on my face because there I am, had just posted the weekly, but I already know I have something to ramble about in a week. And there's, ugh, I love it. Last weekend, Medicom held a virtual show to, you know, display some of their Moffex figures, but there was also some new reveals. The theme for these new reveals? fabric capes. The boys Homelander was teased before the show and the prototype doesn't disappoint. There's the slightly exaggerated costume detail that we've gotten used to in this line and then just tons of extra detailed sculpted bits all over the body. Especially the shoulder pads, those are sharp. There's something to the face but that is a tried and true Medicom tradition at this point. We see something in the prototype stage and then they spend the many 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 months between that and actual release tweaking during production. Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. The exact same thing can be said for the Avengers Infinity War Doctor Strange. I like the overall details, proportions, and especially the colors over the SH Figure Arts version, but it's the cape that catches my eye. We know it's a character itself, and this does a good job of conveying that feel and look. I mean, it almost looks like it just wants to fly off the figure. And then finally, in-game Thor. We're pushing almost two years from the actual movie release, and I'm realizing I don't have this version on the shelf, so it might as well be this one. After the Mephex Infinity War Thor and Black Panther, I'm leaning hard into the Medicom line for my MCU needs. Now they just need to release some figures, and speaking of that, a wise woman once said, you take the good, you take the bad. You take them both, and there you have the ever-changing Mafex release schedule. A month or two ago, it looked like half of the releases for this year were all gonna drop in December, and that's because that's a lot of figures. A lot of it's late. A lot of it keeps getting pushed. But instead of doing the standard get to the figure, oops, it got pushed back, Medicom has released an overall schedule for the next, well, almost the next year. According to this, there are still five figures set to release in December, but 
I'll believe it when I see it. And that's not me trying to be a dick about it. You know I love the Moffex line. And I don't even really mind the waiting. It's just that they don't seem to be trying to fix the situation. I'm just being realistic. And this is a lot of releases, so I'm going to have to be reading. <laughs> Look at pretty pictures. For December, there is Into the Spider-Verse Miles and Peter. There's Chucky, Eva Unit 13, and Carnage. And Carnage is actually on its way right now. In fact, I'm waiting for DHL as I record this. So there's one. Ooh, they're on a roll. But are they going to release four in the next 20 days? For January, there's the Aquaman movie Black Manta, Hush Superman, Dark Knight Triumphant Batman, Iron Spider, and Black Suit Hush Batman. Again, that's a very heavy month, and just rounding all those to 80 bucks a pop, that's $400 on one line. February is lighter with the Spider-Man Far From Home upgraded suit, Aquaman movie Mira, and Infinity War Captain America. The Dark Knight Returns Joker in March lulls you into a false sense of security, making you think, oh, they're getting back on a regular schedule. Nope! They say April will bring Fantastic Beast Grindelwald, Hush Catwoman, Spider-Man Far From Home Stealth Suit, and Comic Book Magneto. And it doesn't stop there. In fact, it gets worse. If this holds true, May is another stacked month with LeBron James, The Mandalorian, and you guys know me. This is the one that hurts the most. It was originally scheduled for this month during all the Mando hype, and... I just too bad. Back to May, there's also in-game Captain America, 92 Team USA Michael Jordan, and Comic Brown Wolverine. June slows down slightly with Comic Book Gambit, Spider-Verse Gwen, and New Batman Adventures Batman, who I honestly completely forgot about. I mean, there is just so much stuff. All the way out in July, there's Hush himself, and then The Dark Knight Returns Blue Batman and Robin, followed by in-game Iron Man Mark 85 in August. That is 28 figures that have been consistently pushed or originally scheduled for next year that just keeps piling up as Metacom posts more and more delays or announces more and more new figures. It's almost second nature at this point to see a Mafex announcement and think, oh, well, I'll be waiting another six months or more for that. Oh well. But if they do stick to this schedule, I feel like a lot of people who haven't canceled already will go ahead and pull that trigger because, whew, that's a lot of strain on the old wallet all at the same time, month to month to month. And if they don't stick to this schedule, which I feel is the more likely scenario, it's just going to get worse. Medicom, I love you, but you already wait a year or two after a movie releases. Hell, in the case of some franchises and comic books, it's several decades after. Ease back on announcing new figures for a while, put your nose to the grindstone, work on getting the stuff you've already announced out, build up some more customer confidence again with good QC and a tighter release schedule, and then come back out swinging. At this point, you're just digging the hole deeper. I and a lot of others want the stuff you've shown. Hell, I want the stuff that you haven't announced yet, but my wallet is also screaming. Work on all that and things will go your way. That's just the facts of life. The facts of life. The Mezco 112 Collective Predator was shown back at Toy Fair in February, and oh, has it been a year already? Damn. But this week, the actual pre-order dropped. Back then, I didn't really think of all the extras they can throw into this release, but there is the bone necklaces and bandoliers, extra armor and blade bits, articulated plasma caster with blast, a severed spine with skull trophy, more than enough hands, bio helmet, and interchangeable mouthpieces for the unmasked head. Those mouthpieces work with a magnet gimmick. They just pop off, pop on, and when I read that, I went looking at the pictures thinking, oh, there's got to be a seam line somewhere, but I don't know, it's pretty well integrated. It's always a plus. There's even a light-up feature on the bio helmet and the plasma caster. The netting over the body is separate weaved threads, and even around the waist there's some cloth, hangy downies. That's what that's called, hangy downies. And that complements the nice skin tones and paint details. The figure clocks in at about 7.8 inches tall, which I feel is really close to the NECA Predator line, but I haven't laid hands on those in a while, so I can't... Were those big? Those are... Well, those are 7 inch scale, right? When I saw the solicitation, though, and it said Deluxe Edition, I was worried about cost, but it seems like Mezco is backing off the price hikes. $100 isn't bad for a 112th Collective figure with light-up features. Usually we see 110 120 130 so on. The Predator is scheduled for late summer 2021. Wait, McFarlane only has one DC announcement this week? We sure about that? Guys, must be the holidays, but here is the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Batman Beyond. I've never read the comics much, and I miss most of the show, but I understand the concept. It's a sleek black Batman with the red logo, the red wings, the inexplicable opening mouth on a mask. I get it, it's a futuristic take, and it's comic books, and it's cartoons. 
ease up. As always, Todd posted a video of him playing around with the figure, and it looks like the wings are articulated, but it's the boot blasts that tickle my fancy. A single hole in the bottom of the foot with one peg, but it's sculpted to look like a double jet blast, and that's just a little extra oomph that I appreciate. They didn't have to add that, it's already a completely unique sculpt for the figure, but hey, extras are good. No details yet, but pre-order should open up soon, or if it's part of a wave, if it's an exclusive, who knows. Coming soon, look for it. It's also nice to see Storm Collectibles adding to their Golden Axe line. When I went up to Veeb's house to help him open up Snake Mountain, I got a chance to mess with Axe Battler and the Red Dragon and the Skeletons, and I was pleasantly surprised. Well, surprised is a strong word. I've test driven some Storm Collectibles, Mortal Kombat, and Street Fighter, so there's a familiarity. It's just that these three were better than I expected. But according to this week's tease, Golden Axe fans will soon be adding Death Adder to the shelf. Seems he's sometimes shown as just shadow within the helmet, and then other times he has some facial details poking through, and that's the direction Storm went with it. That's good, action figures are a 3D medium, and if it was just a flat surface, it would have lost some luster, I think. I have no idea where I'm going with this. Bottom line, Death Adder is a big, half-naked badass to pit against your smaller, half-naked badass. Solicitations should drop soon. Just a reminder, the pre-order for the GTP Toys Tanta 4 Blockade Runner display set ends this weekend. The set nicely replicates that hallway from the first of Star Wars A New Hope, so if you have a bunch of Rebel Troopers and Storm Troopers, ooh, and here's your display space, just throw them all in different hands and that. Now these aren't as interchangeable as the Death Star walls. You can't put the doors in different places and such, but the panels in the walls you can flip and switch and put where you want. That way if you get two and put them end to end on a shelf, you can make it look different as the hallway goes along. Plus it says like 100 static and blinking LEDs. That's insane to me. It is about $180, but if you're familiar with Death Star walls, you know the quality here. If you're interested at all, you better jump on it <laughs> right now. Speaking of Star Wars, oh, you like that transition? That's why they call me the Segway King. Nobody calls me that. We already knew about the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series archive editions of Commander Cody, Hoth Han Solo, Hoth Luke Skywalker, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. We just didn't know when pre-orders were going to go up. Until now. Like, now now. The pre-orders are open now. We've gotten used to the archives waves giving us updated face paints with the photo reel technology, but it's also a good way to get hard to find figures like Commander Cody back out there. Figures who don't benefit from better facial features. Luke still looks rough, but at this point, I firmly believe that Mark Hamill just has a face that is hard to translate into plastic form. Still looks better than the original version that might as well had come out in 1980. They didn't add the wrists that were missing from the version that came with the Wampa, but they don't tend to do that in this series, so it's not a surprise. Hoth Han is an interesting case, though. The original with the Tauntaun was in a blue jacket, but bad face paint, and then that was reissued in an exclusive pack with Leia that had the brown jacket, but soft goods collar and no hood. The archive release changes it up by dropping the collar and then adding the hood back, but keeping the brown color. Dorkside Toys already has the Han in hand and shows that whichever side of the fence you're on, either brown jacket or blue jacket, you can do some swapping between the three figures to give your preferred jacket along with a more realistic head. But then there's Grand Admiral Thrawn. Like the others, hard to find at this point, is improved by sharper face details, especially in the eyes. And how about that timing? If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, but if you don't and you're behind, I'm not going to get into spoilers. Plus this gives me a second one so I can paint up some Veer's armor in white and put a Rebels Thrawn on the shelf. If you're happy with the original releases, no harm, no foul. This isn't in the main line, it's not taking up any spots. This just gives people who wanted the figures a chance to grab them, or suckers like me who are like, oh, that looks just a tad bit better. Gimme, gimme. Around $21 a piece should release in January. Last week we saw the last live stream for the Hasbro Marvel team, but that doesn't mean that's the end of the Legends pre-orders. Firestar was premiered a couple of months ago at PulseCon and I was excited. Much needed character and it looked good, but me personally, I'm not a fan of windswept hair, so I was interested in the other options they hinted at. So when she did go up for pre-order on fan channels earlier this week, I was 
happy to see a alternate head with more normal laying hair, more neutral hair. But not just any alternate head, it's a damn fine representation of Angelica Jones from the cartoon Spider-Man and his amazing friends. The windy hair head has a mask with jagged edges to call back to the classic comic book appearances, but the other head has a more basic mask, it has the curls, and even red streaks in the hair for that cartoon look. The collar works against that, but hey, we're most of the way there. To push that animation connection even further, the background in the package is the old secret headquarters, and then you may recognize this dog. I remember Miss Lion as brown, but after minutes and minutes of exhaustive research, it seems that she is white and gray in modern comics. Either way, an excellent pack-in along with the standard female hands and some fire effects. Overall, this release puts two things in my brain pan. One, we need a new 70s inspired Iceman with just a white body, some hints of blue, and those angled details to the sculpt. And two, after messing around with the Hasbro Dungeons and Dragons Dritz and his interchangeable hair, we need more of that in the Marvel Legends line. That gimmick would work perfectly here to give you even more options. Like I said, Firestar is a fan channel release, about $22 and drops in March. And that's it for this week, for the most part. If there's anything I missed or messed up, <laughs> we'll swing back around to that next week. If you're interested in a better look at any of these pictures without me all the facts of life the facts of life i will be posting all of that plus links to more information and pre-orders on the foosh front page saturday at noon another few comments i got on the last weekly was my disdain for the new gi joe designs way back at toy fair when they did reveal the first series and it was the gold that's the only real problem i had with them even then getting them in hand as i always say good figures are good figures I didn't mind the gold. Go back and watch the reviews. There's proof. So when I say I'm happy about Roadblock and Scarlet getting re-released with tweak colors, that's not me going, good, finally. This line sucked until now. I'm still happy with my originals, but I'm also happy that Hasbro is listening to some and giving options. And if I hadn't said it enough today already, options are good. Maybe that'll be a trend. They release a version with, you know, modern stylings and then later a version with toned down colors. Like the Cobra Trooper, where the original release was a pain in the ass to get, and then they throw it into the main line with some toned down colors, some missing accessories. Hey, we still get the character, right? Same armor plates and all that, because like I've said for nine months now, I don't have a problem with that. So all I can ask is don't just swoop in and take one tiny part of a 20 minute video out of context and then try to give me the business in the comments section. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it's silly. Anyway, if you enjoyed the weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foolish. Going back to the Dungeons and Dragons Drist review though, I have no clue why I did not think to put either an MCU or a Marvel Legends Black Panther beside Guinevere. So I've posted that in the community tab, or you can go to my Instagram, Fushrobo, and I've posted them there too. It looks good. It does.